Hi, everyone. Hello, hello, and uh, welcome for the very last time here on Channel 4 at 5 o'clock. We've had seven long and happy years on this sofa, so I guess you can expect some nostalgia tonight. Certainly can, because this is it, the end of the line. You're watching programme number 1,129, which is uh, nearly 70,000 minutes of live television. And here are just some of them. We look back at us, our exclusives, like the day Hillary Clinton told us why she forgave Bill over Monica, and the day Bill told us why part of his penance meant sleeping alone on the couch. We'll have more headline-making moments like those. Um, and a final feature, it shouldn't happen to a celebrity, but it did right here. We remember the absurd things the rich and famous quite cheerfully did to put a smile on ours and your faces. Who said showbiz was all about sensitive egos? That lot were always up for a laugh at their own expense. Also tonight, some of the many bloopers that we've made, the mistakes, the cock-ups, and the nights our guests made us cry with laughter. But we're going to start on this final show with the undoubted heroes of this, our final series on four. Ian Marber's Fat Boy Slim. They've lost so much weight over the last few weeks, and they've been honest and open and brave and dedicated and cheerful from the word go. We love them. And tonight comes their final challenge. They've got to do the full Monty live. <laughs> I really enjoyed myself, it was a really good experience and I was so relieved when I lost five pounds. The skydiving to me was probably the best fun I've had outside the bedroom. I'm really pleased I managed to at least four pounds. I think if I hadn't then the rest of the group would have thrown me in fully clothed. <laughs> Come on, get me the biggest story I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> That was brilliant. It was a really good experience, although I'm going to have to find a, an ice pack. I might swear a little bit, I won't, you know. You give me reason to live. This is going to be so great. We're going to close this over these guys, stripping off. I want to shake your hands, guys, because you're yeah. fantastic. You have done such a good job for yourselves and for us. Absolutely. And you've been, you've been saying all day, it's kind of changed your lives, hasn't it? Well done, Ian. Good Thank job, you. good yeah. job. How, I have how, just bowed to them. Pardon? I have, have you just bowed? <laughs> oh, I should, I should <laughs> name left, left to right, obviously we've got Ian here, but we've got Neil, Tom, Stephen, Paul, and at the end on the right, Tommy. Um, how has it changed your life? Considerably a lot. Um, yeah. The weight loss has been great. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I've never felt hung hungry <laughs> being on this diet. Really, it's been really everybody good. says that on this diet. Well, what's been lovely for us to watch, apart from you all losing so much weight and having so much fun, is how well you all seem to get on. Because you didn't know each <laughs> yeah. other from Adam, did you, when you first no, started no. off? No. We've got them really well in jail. They're, they're happy did you say you got them really well, well in jail? Yeah. <laughs> 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 got really well in jail. I missed that episode. So. <laughs> so will you, do you think you'll keep in touch? Yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's, have you, have you weighed them in today? We have. Are they still losing? They are still losing, yes. We have a magnificent total of nine stone between you and ten weeks. Oh, that's so amazing. Congratulations well, that's and thank congratulations you for Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So should, should we ask each of you how much you've mm. lost? If we start off with you, Neil, how much have you lost? Uh, two stone and five, five pounds. pounds. Oh, that's a heck of a lot. You all look great. Can, do, 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 you feel, I, do you feel a lot better? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I, I bet you do. I really do. Yeah. You're the baby of the group. How yes. Old, how old are you now? Uh, 23. 23, okay. Almost 24. You look so much better than when you started. How, how much yeah. you lost? I, I just over a stone now, so not too bad. Well, no, more than not too bad. It's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing is uh, I feel a heck of a lot much healthier than I did. Do, do, do you? You? What, yeah. you? You don't get breathless as much, that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. that and just generally feeling a lot healthier, really. Fine. And you, Governor? Uh, it's about a stone and a half lost. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you ever had weeks when you went up again, or has it been a constant...? No, I've been quite lucky. I think one week I sort of didn't lose any weight, but on average yeah. it's about two pounds a week. Excellent. What about you, mate? Two stone, three pounds. Yeah, you look really good. Fantastic. Yeah, you really do. And you, Tommy, you've lost two stone. Yes, I lost yeah. two stone, yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. What about Congratulations. Blood, thank you very much. Their blood yeah. pressure's come down, and you've all come from being morbidly obese down to the normal or slightly overweight mark, because that's an incredible achievement. And also, I assume you'll all keep this up. So mm. a thank you from me. I really appreciate your time.
time. Can I, Thank can, you. Can I ask you, what about the ladies in your life? I mean, have they all noticed a big change? Are they are they all very pleased? Yeah, we don't snore yeah. in bed, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Neil's getting a proper night's sleep. Yeah. yeah, well, both of us. Well, yeah. well, I found myself about Why, it. did you snore a lot? Why, no, oh. one of you did. Was that, was yes, that you? that was me. Yeah. 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 We all had dinner last night, and I got a big thank you from I Trisha. Oh. <laughs> um, I remember in the very first episode, before you started the diet, um, you all spoke, I thought, very openly and movingly about your body image. You know, I mean, you all said you were fed up with the way you looked, and you were very honest and open about that. How has your body image changed? How do you feel about the way you look now? Oh, a lot more confident. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. more confident. Yeah. 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 But that embarrassment's gone, that, 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 that was always nagging away at you. Yeah. Yeah. Stick, yeah. You stick yeah. the shot and see your trousers now instead of leaving it out and trying to hide it. Now listen, we've got to ask you about how you feel about tonight. <laughs> 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 you poor guys, I couldn't believe you'd actually do this. I mean, how do you feel about doing the full Monty? I've not got a problem. You've not got a problem? No, no. Who was it who was seen dancing in a full it Monty's way? It was you, just your fault. It's your fault. Yeah. I gave us the idea. She gave us the idea. Yeah. I have to say, we really yeah. didn't know how to end this, but Tommy, you can all the, here's the joke of the pack. So how much rehearsal have you been doing? A fair bit. Yeah. Quite a fair yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 How many times we've we've uh, rehearsed? So but. you've got you've got your shapes to throw. You've got your moves, and you've yeah. got your synchronisation when everything comes off. Well. And everything is going to come off. There's going to be a hat. There's going to be a hat. Okay. Yes. Well, the hat may fall. I think the hat may, the hat may be thrown away, Julia. That's what I've been hearing all day. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll see you all later. See you later Thank you very much. I should just mention again that Ian's book, The Food Doctor Ultimate Diet, which is what this whole diet's been based on, um, is out now. Now, we've had so many fabulous guests over the past seven years, so dotted around throughout today's show are messages from just a few of them, starting with Lenny Henry. Richard and Judy just seem to be naturally graceful interviewers, you know. They allow you to bounce around and they can accommodate messing around and silliness because they're so confident in what they do. And I think that's the mark of great interviewers. It's that they, they've got that ebb and flow and, and grace that allows you to uh, mess around. In the lights. Oh, brilliant. I'll switch mine on. Watch Richard, this. Watch this. I'm sorry, but you're going to get your ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> it was so pathetic because they turned the lights off and you heard two grown men going zzz, zzz, zzz. This is great. This is <laughs> Judy, I know you can. <laughs> Richard, you are. Zzz, Judy, you are. Zzz, die, you will. The force then, is strong in you, Richard. Listen, listen. I sort of like it when Richard interrupts Judy because I, I, I imagine that Judy wears the trousers most of the time. <laughs> so the telly is Richard's only opportunity to say, so, hang, on, hang on, love, hang on, darling, can I just say this? Even though they've got loads of Wonga, clearly, a big old house that you can drive a car around, you know. Just go to the kitchen, love. <laughs> Even though they've got all that, they appear to be two people who love their job, who like talking to people on the telly. They seem to be able to do it incredibly naturally, and I wish them all the best in the future, because they're really good at what they do. Well, that was 50 quid well spent, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's very that's sweet Lenny. of you. Thank you. <laughs> Wear the trousers at home. I do the interrupting at home. I should be so lucky. Say nothing <laughs> at all. <laughs> OK, listen, we're going to have more messages later on from our good friends who've been on this show over the years. Uh, but time for the first of our last ever commercial breaks on this show. Welcome back. Hi. Tick tock, three quarters of an hour to go. As promised now, it's time to reveal which of our recommended summer reads this year has been voted the, nation, the nation's favourite. Mind you, they were all favourites, really, because at one point this summer, the top four in the bestseller charts were all books on our list. So here's how you voted. In third place came uh, this one, East of the Sun by Julia Gregson. It's a really lovely story about three women who travel to India in 1928 to find husbands. Uh, second comes my personal favourite of the lot, The Outcast by Sadie Jones. It's a, it's a haunting, utterly absorbing and ultimately uplifting book about a boy in 1950s England who is shunned by his family and society after an appalling tragedy. But Britain's top choice over all our summer reads this year was, I'm happy to say, <laughs> my own personal favourite too, so you've got great taste. No Time for Goodbye by Linwood Barclay. It's an utterly gripping thriller. Starting with the morning, a 14-year-old girl wakes up to find her entire family has vanished in the night. A really terrific summer read. As were they all. The trouble is yeah. that uh, me and Judy now have nothing to read. We're going on holiday ourselves. Uh, oh, well. there's, there's a new Ruth Rendell out. Is there? Oh, all right, OK. <laughs> down In there. any case, it's a yeah. sacrifice for the greater good. And listen, thanks to all of you uh, who emailed or posted your votes on these books. We really appreciate you taking that trouble. Thank you. Yeah, we do indeed. Now time for some trips down memory lane, starting with some of the dafter moments we've had with our guests over seven long years. <laughs> Thank you.
Take the broom. I'm so okay, sick, okay. sick, sick, I'm no, sick. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, Rachel. Just be retired. Just stay at home with Richard. Don't you know? Oh, 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 We know that you are a great motorcyclist, <clears throat> and these are the very, very latest in goggles. They are. These are for skiing, though, aren't they? They are for skiing, but <laughs> right. they look just <laughs> as cool. Do they should for... we just wear them like that? That's, That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> we got an expert to look at these earlier. I'm amazed that you found an expert on two-headed tortoises. <laughs> yeah. Do you live near Sellafield? Or... <laughs> There are only about four professional Simon looky-likes in the entire country. Simon, this is this is this is you on you. I mean, A, B, and C. What did you think? Ah, uh, B is the winner. Oh, well done, B. Stephen Mangan is now, we hope, sitting in the cockpit of a Routemaster bus and is ready to brave the streets of London. Jason, aren't you supposed to be on there with him? Ah, I'm going to get on the back now, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> we thought maybe if you'd flash to your underwear. I mean, we, we know that uh, you, we've got you <laughs> in, your own, in your own range right, of underwear, and we've actually tried it out. We've marketed it in the. <laughs> Why are frogs? Oh! Why are frogs? Man? Oh my god. <laughs> and we sent him off for real on it to fetch a pint for the gentleman and a white wine from our local pub for the lady. Pint and lager, please. A glass of white wine for the lady. Hey, good man. Have you been drinking my pint? But I mean, obviously, as far as Orville's concerned, you know, you've ruffled a few feathers, as <laughs> you might say. Um, and Orville did actually ask for the right of reply. <laughs> yeah, I thought the sketch was fantastic, eh? It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. Sight gag number one, please. <laughs> Look at that. There's, there's a poor Thank researcher you. in there that <laughs> was, there was, was promised he'd be <laughs> producer by now. <laughs> You're from the Oh, that's good. That's well, he looks more like me than most cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you can help uh, your younger fans. This is, great. This is Daniel. Miss Titmus, I'm really stuck. What does this mean? Wellisme unquam comitare unum natu minora. Yes. It's not would you go out with a younger man. Yes! yes. Oh my god! <laughs> now, you had a great moment in that celebrity golf tournament. Just, and just look at that. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. If we were your, your adoptive mum and dad, mm. you'd expect us to buy your pony, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Bring the pony in, please. Oh, <laughs> sure. There we are. Oh, mummy and daddy, thank you, thank you! <laughs> Everybody can do the time warp in our office, so we've got them to do it just for you. So take it away, boys and girls, you're Ooh. on. Put your hands on your hips. Because he was in it, wasn't he? Aspel was in the Rocky He's Horror in the Show. the Rocky Horror Show. Look, <laughs> looking forward to the suspenders. Absolutely. God, I forgot we'd done all that. Listen, we've yeah. got two of our re very favourite regular guests on the show now, Vanessa Feltz and Mike McLean. Nice to see oh, you all. Oh, we're going to miss it terribly. Um, and, uh, really miss it. You're not going to say to the next guest that they're the favourites, because yeah. I'll oh, be very yeah. disappointed. <laughs> they're all favourites. Judy is like Brucey. You know. yeah. You're my favourite. You're my favourite. Yeah, but I want to be. <laughs> that's really teasing me, that. Oh, dear. What a long, long time what you, it's What been. are your memories from, from the last few years? Well, I just be? love the way you always ask with such charm that when, when you know, when they ask, for example, they, you once said to me, uh, very nicely, without saying, look, you're always having trouble with your weight, so why wouldn't you like to lose some? You actually just said, would you like to be wrapped in stuff and would you like to wear some very small, very stunted looking Japanese slippers? Oh, Do you oh, remember that? Really and I was, meant to, I was meant to undertake to wear these slippers for hours and hours of every week <laughs> in order to lose weight. And I did, I did, I dutifully limped around. I didn't lose a single ounce. Were they, were they very uncomfortable? Of course they, they were. were yeah. Yeah. But for you, but for you, it was a mere, a mere nothing. A mere oh, no, nothing. I'm, what I'm, about I'm, you? Mike. You've made you've made so, you've made so many. many films. You've films. sent me. I was thinking today, Joni, you've uh, you've buried me in a box in Amsterdam. <laughs> you've sent me on a plane with a little old lady who's about 82, yeah. wind walking. I thought she was going to die at the end. <laughs> I'm thinking if she survives this, I'll be amazed. But these weren't films, Mike. We're just going to get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. What's your favourite? Uh, I think the squirrel. Yeah. The squirrel. Everybody, everybody says, "Oh, you're the one what that does that story." No, like Basically, it was a squirrel that had bitten a policeman, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is your reconstruction. <laughs> <laughs> I had to run in and run out and then take the squirrel bit off and then do the next bit to camera there. I did that about, that took about 18, 96 because I could see him in the background and I just kept laughing and laughing. But uh, it was a squirrel that bit a policeman yeah. and uh, they literally put out um, somebody to try and find the squirrel. So we I went remember, and made yeah. a report. And do you remember the unpleasant pheasant? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Kept attacking yeah. People. And then you made me, um, there's a bloke that at roadkill. So you oh, sent me off to meet yes. him. Yes. And you made me Great bad and, and I'm like flying there to Cornwall thinking, <laughs> 
Why am I? Didn't why can't I just don't that guy in Cornwall subsequently? Oh, we no, thought no, we no. did. I'll tell you what happened. We thought a he was the roadkill guy. He'd, he'd done this film. It's yeah. very uh, eccentric and unusual. He's man. a nutter, Richard. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's the word. And a week later, I'm, we're waiting to catch a Badenic ferry in Cornwall. And there's a bloke in the in a car in front of me, and he's getting plastic bags out of the back of that. And there's roadkill in it. By the way, yeah. well, I thought it wasn't. It? And it's this bloke who recognised so him. So I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, "Hello, what an odd coincidence. Can I shake your hand?" We shook hands, and I said, "You were very good on the show last week." He said. What are you talking about? <laughs> I said, you're, you're roadkill, you're the guy who eats roadkill, aren't you? He said, oh, no, no, these, 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 these are chocolate samples. I, 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 it wasn't him. Listen, Vanessa, you've been a fabulous regular it's guest for us on the show. You've always had something you. to say and, and something to bring to the conversations Thank and the you. debates. You really have. Thank and, we'll, and we'd love to use you again on our, our next series elsewhere. I'll be delighted. So please, be delighted. Please Thank you very much. Listo, Mike, you've been fantastic. No, no, we carry on I've had together. six and a half great years. So yes, Thank you very much. You've you worked really hard. Thank you. All right, listen, uh, time for another message from another big British name who we've always enjoyed seeing here, Richard Wilson. When you go on Richard and Judy, it's like going to visit family, you know. Uh, but I remember one time in particular in, uh, in London that they had a, a Victor Meldrew look-alike competition, and I don't think I knew it was coming. And suddenly there was a studio lineup of Victor Meldrew would-bes. I don't believe it! Oh, lovely. I don't believe it! Oh. I don't believe it! <laughs> And uh, I had to choose uh, which was the most Victor Melter esque. I don't believe it! Oh, lovely. <laughs> well, I think number 10 should be admitted to a mental home. <laughs> Here we go. I, I th oh, no! <laughs> I wasn't going to say she it. She was going to say that! <laughs> oh, fantastic! <laughs> they make it look simple. I'm sure a lot of people will look at it and say, I could do that. But of course they can't. Oh, I think they could. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, that was very sweet of you, thank it you. It was. Yeah. Um, now, every week of this final series, we've been digging into our archives to relive some of the interviews we've done with really mega-famous superstars, and you voted for your favourite ten. And here they are, the final lineup of your favourite ever super celebs. Michael Caine, Jane Fonda, Will Smith, J.K. Rowling, Madonna, Arnold Schwarzenegger, George Clooney, Hugh Grant, Jackie Chan, and the person you voted for this week was Renee Zellweger. And I'll tell you what, a question that people ask us all the time, in journalists in interviews and people down the pub, they say, what are these big A-list celebrities like, really? What are they, I mean, and everyone assumes, because of the way they're often written about, that, that, that they're a nightmare and that they, all, they have this huge sort of legacy of people with them. And, you know, most of them are really sweet, ordinary, nice people, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're nothing. I mean, really. I mean, I, can't, I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of... A no, you're not going to go into that. You're <laughs> not going there. A-list celebrities, A-list celebrities who have been pains up the backside. Probably four over, over, over the last seven years. All right, well. And one of them was no. We'll okay, ignore that. Now, <laughs> now, then, Amanda Holden was actually uh, the first ever guest we had on this show when we started here uh, seven years ago. What was it? November the 28th, 2001. Was it the 28th? I think it was. I think it was yeah. Anyway, late, maybe yeah. the 26th. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so we really thought that she should be around for the last one. Uh, so here she is with her message. And look out for her gorgeous little daughter, Lexi. I had the privilege of being on their first show on Channel 4 and I actually can't remember it but I'll give baby a cuddle. Um, it's just them, it's just they're so professional and put you at ease immediately. It's just their way of doing things, it's just you feel like you're talking to your next door neighbours. Where we live, I, mean, I don't want to sound like I'm moaning, but where we live they literally still camp out in cars and take pictures. I mean people must be sick of seeing me and Les taking the dogs for a walk, it's really not news anymore. <laughs> or me being clamped. It's like home from home, you know, Richard will pop into the makeup room and say hi, and then you sit on their sofa and I feel like I could tell them absolutely anything, I completely forget myself. In the green room afterwards when you're having a cup of tea with them, they chat away. They always remember Lexi's name, they always remember stuff about my family, They. They're just fantastic. They're just brilliant, down-to-earth, non-show-busy couple. They're like um, a battery, I suppose. There's, there's a, they're a plus and a minus, and you couldn't have one without the other, otherwise it wouldn't work. Yes, but are we A cell or D cell? Or Am I the plus or the minus? Pardon? Oh, I'm definitely. You're definitely the minus, dude. I think we. I think we'd all have to accept that. Thank you. Very Chloe, much. come in, quick, quick, quick. We just. Come, oh, come on, Chloe. Come on, quick, quick. Oh, come quick. on. Come on. We just saw Lexi. Come on, quick, run in. Because uh, lots of people, lots of old friends have come in, and this is an old friend of ours. This is our daughter, Chloe. <laughs> Hello, Chloe. All right, you're okay. <laughs> tell, us a, t tell, us, tell us about the Cumberland Hotel you just saw. No, <laughs> she's never Can I, can I tell them? Yeah. She came here in a cab and she sent me a text when we were in rehearsal, and she said, This is really weird. She said, I'm sitting, it's stuck in traffic. She said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, sitting opposite the, the cucumber land. What's cucumber land? I said, I think it's the Cumberland Hotel. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> you didn't tell that right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thanks Do I very ever? much, Amanda, and indeed Chloe. And uh, we're going to see all of you again right after this break. You didn't say that right. Welcome back. Hello again. Yeah, welcome back. Jamie Oliver's done quite a lot of slaving over a hot stove for us over the years, and he's <laughs> very kindly sent us this message. Richard and Judy, the story so far has come to an end, but I just want to say I love you very much. You've been so good to me over the years. We've had some great times. Do you remember the time when I came round your house and you cooked me roast dinner on a Sunday? Do you remember when I knocked the umbrella over and it set fire to a candle and nearly burned your house down? <laughs> And do you remember when I stepped foot in the kitchen and Richard, you were so rude to me. You said, why don't you get out of my kitchen, you little Do you remember that? Yeah. I couldn't believe this. you'll have to bleep that. Just want to say, uh, we're going to miss you. You've been brilliant. I've personally grown up with you on the telly. Uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you professionally and personally. Uh, you're both great laugh. Um, Richard, you've definitely got even a filthy amount from me, which I don't think anyone really knows, but you are hilarious. Um, and I know you're going to go on to bigger and better things, so well done, lots of love, and uh, if you want to come and have a goodbye party, we'll, we're waiting for you at 15, mate. Just give us the numbers and we'll do it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jamie. He didn't. He didn't mention that it was actually um, David Wallum's David umbrella, Wallum's wasn't it? Umbrella Brand new, bespoke caught umbrella. Caught fire! It was just a fire it was in the hall. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. Yeah. It was really funny. You had to buy him a new one. I had to go and get him a new one. Yeah, from the big <laughs> emporium. But the thing, the thing. Sorry, Jamie. I'm sorry to, to almost physically boot you out of my kitchen. But it's just that you can't have another chef in the kitchen, can you? You can't have two chefs. Too many cooks spoil the broth. Anybody in the kitchen? I can't stand. I'll turn into Hitler over a, over a hot stove. Yeah. yeah. Ach, and all that. Anyway, thank you for that, mate. Um, now, as you may know, Judy and I actually began our careers in very different parts of the country. As journalists, we spent uh, years working as reporters, and we've never really lost our appetite for an exclusive. Our brilliant news team here on the programme have delivered many scoops for us here over the years. We're very grateful to them for that, and we're going to remember a few of them right now. We start with the first British television interviews given by a couple who spent eight years in the White House together, Bill and Hillary. And, of course, we had to ask them both about Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> I have to say, I felt quite strongly you should leave. Why did you decide to stay? Well, I think um, that crossed my mind, obviously, more than once. Uh, I, you know, I knew that I had to make this decision on my terms, not by what anybody else thought. And, of course, I was getting all kinds of unsolicited advice from around the world, basically. Mm. And we did go into counseling, which I read about, and we spent a lot of time. Did that help? Yes, mm. yes. I slept in that little room because um, the couch was comfortable. I had a table that I could work in. Uh, the uh, television was close enough for me to see, unlike the two <laughs> guest bedrooms. And, uh, and also, I think, uh, at least subconsciously, I think I thought I should be on that couch till Hillary let me off yeah. of it. What was, the, what, what was the day, what was the occasion when Hillary said, it's all right, you can come back into the bed? I really don't remember. Don't you? No. Gosh. It's funny, I don't remember. It just happened once. We started laughing again, as I said in the book. You know, the whole circumstance was so utterly absurd. All the speculation has been that um, it happened, if it happened, because um, he was lonely, because uh, Victoria was not in Spain. Would you mm. agree with that? To a great extent, I would. Yes, I feel that if there hadn't been a gap in that bed, I wouldn't have been in it. Just put yourself in Victoria's place, though, and if that happened oh, to you... Not. <laughs> no, no, but, but if it listen, happened to you... You're a woman, mm -hmm. and you know, and yep. you, 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 that happened to you. Um, could you ever trust your husband ever again? Me, personally? Hmm. Yeah. No. Big no. no. That would be the end for you. Yes. Do you have any, then, any regrets in life? When I appeared on Desert Island Discs, <laughs> my last record was Edith Piaf singing, Gee, Gee, Regree, Gree. <laughs> my speech synthesizer is hopeless at trend, <laughs> but it means I regret nothing. <laughs> With hindsight, do you think that it would have been fair at any point for any of your girlfriends or acquaintances or lovers to say, got to say, John Leslie likes rough sex? Would that be a fair comment about your, 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 your no, lovemaking? I don't even know what rough sex is, Richard. Well, very physical sex. No. Forceful sex. No. 
No. That's not your pattern. That's not, not your pattern at all. No. Nothing could be further from the truth, says George Michael, and he's on the line now. Hi, George. Uh, how are you doing? Hi, hi. Thanks hey, for hanging on the line. Let's, let's, get, the, let's <laughs> get the Hampstead Heath thing out of the way first. I mean, you don't have too many issues with that. I mean, you, you were slightly embarrassed at the way they teased you about the, the way that, that the well, other I mean, guy... I think the truth is the news of the world knows that I'm not... I've got no issue with cruising. I've talked about it many times, and I've got no issue with that. So mm. they have to make me look like, you know, I don't know, the gay Wayne Rooney, don't they? <laughs> I mean, much as I don't want to be ageist or fattest... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Somebody's saying Cherie Blair Cherie Blair's on the line. You're not. You're joking. No. For flowers. Uh, is, Cherie, is that you, Cherie? It is me. How are you, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Um, is this true that Tony's never, ever bought you a bunch of flowers? I'm afraid it is absolutely true. What? Isn't never... that terrible? Yeah, not even for anniversaries or children being born or... No. God. I will do something uh, quite... sufficiently romantic. All right. Yes, you are quite romantic, yes. aren't you? There are other ways of being romantic. Like what? To see defensively and like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of ways, Judy. Lots of ways. <laughs> oh come on! Echoing now. I mean, I'm going to say. Yeah. What? A little, a little sort of. Is this, we, we can't phone a friend at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, I think he's suffering. Cuddle. Enough. Yeah, I think. All right. Uh, I remember he turned to me at one point and said, "Come on, back me up." And I said, "You're on your own, mate." <laughs> <laughs> Buy the flowers. <laughs> Listen, we thought this might be an appropriate moment to welcome two of the best journalists in Britain back on this final show. And I say that honestly and truthfully. Nick Ferrari and Amanda Patel, top of the game. <laughs> Hello, guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it is funny, isn't it, when you see people like that? When I mean, seeing someone like like Bill Clinton talking about sleeping on the couch. And I know we get criticised for the way that we conduct some of our interviews, but I personally would rather hear him talking about that, get an insight in, into the, the most Im uh, important man I I on the planet at that point in time. You mean into his sex life? Well, no, <laughs> but, no, living a, no, living a life like the rest of us. Yeah. But isn't that where the magic, and I don't think the camera should go on you two now, because that's the magic of what you do. Judy, you could ask the question about, I've got to, of Hillary, I've got to be honest with you, why didn't you dump him? Only because of what you do together could mm -hmm. you put that question with that sort of oomph. You as a bloke, and that's a bloke's question, and again, because you're with Judy, mm. that is the magic of what you two do, oh, and you apply yeah. yourself it, to any situation. And it's Cheap, also because, I mean, this, this is also our show, Richard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's also because you have... The no, because you have, um, you have a great reputation as journalist. This is the thing people forget about you, is you're proper journalist. That's why I love coming on the show, um, because I really respect what you do. I would give my eye teeth to have had any of those interviews that you've got there. But you know, you, 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 you've been everything to us, yeah? I mean, because you've done daft stuff. <laughs> um, I remember, do you remember when you called that Frenchman a cheese eating surrender monkey? Oh, God. Do you remember? Was that Iraq War? <laughs> and I said, that's like, when you think about it, I've been on talking about the Iraq War. I've been talking about facial peeling. But if I could curly just, hair. It was curly hair, my, my atrocious love life, my successful love life. But there's <laughs> one thing that I want to just say to you. Um, you gave me work when I was virtually unemployable, and I will never, ever forget. That was after Aww. the trial, wasn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> you did. And you, you, oh, you, re you um, resurrected me. And, oh, not at and, all. Um, and you're a, you're a great no, talent. No, you did. A great right. talent. And, 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 and Nick, I have to say that, I mean, you know, drive, you, you, you present the morning show here in, uh, in London, and, mm. I, and I, you know, stop at garages and go into chemists on the way to work, and everybody tells me what you've said that morning. I yeah. mean, you, you know, or, or, or what you said on the show last night, or they talk about your teeth being white. <laughs> now, that, <laughs> hair being that was great. I spend £5,000 on these, right? I arrive first time. He says, now, viewers, you may want to tame the brightness button down and ask, and ask for sunglasses, right? Five grand out of pocket, and he's just laughing Five at it. Five grand? Yeah. Is yeah. that Don't you start as well. Oh, sorry. I had enough from the divorce lawyer. <laughs> plus the, <laughs> plus the, the time you made me take the 11 plus, and I, yeah. prompt, and I promptly failed, which was good. I had to decorate a Christmas tree in under 60 seconds. Oh, we did that together. That was That's fantastic. Right. And then I, I had to wait. And of course, only Richard and Judy, when you get a call from one of your production team, Nick, are you doing anything? No, I'm not. Right, can we, could you possibly stand under a tall building a man will climb up on a ladder and film you waving. That's okay. Because, that's because, we'll see this here, that's because Nick is the only human being in Britain, let's see this, who is actually visible on Google Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Recognisably so, there he is. Is it my teeth? Blowing <laughs> into our space. It is. My physiotherapist doesn't half fancy you. <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> He's a very nice man. Yeah, well, there we go. We can always talk. No, it's a lady and she tells her husband that if you'd come along earlier in her life, she would never have married there him. There you go. Well, maybe there's some. If only you could have got to Tony Blair on Gordon Brown. Wasn't that uh, yeah, great well, that when you started getting, yeah, 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 knocking yeah, him back, back on the flowers? Yeah. That was good. Yeah. And didn't we? Don't we miss him? Private, what has he said? I am <laughs> sealed. Don't we miss him though, when we yeah. see those skills on I the know. screen? It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a different Prime Minister. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, well. 
Well, what, what happened to Blair happened to Blair, and obviously the Iraq War was, you know, a kind of a nemesis, for, which I've always felt was not of his making. I just think it was, he was a politician in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that. What do you guys think? It's about what that? he'll be remembered for, unfortunately. It yeah. sort of eclipses everything he ever did, yeah. um, which I think is the personal tragedy. Yeah. It was the one thing he mm. actually believed in, and it's. But what the one we thing thing I'm not going to get into, like. it. I'm not going to get into an Iraq War fest here. But I mean, what we tend to forget is that in the in the, in the, in the months leading up to the invasion of Iraq, whatever people say or think about it now, most people genuinely believe that he had weapons of mass destruction, That's including true. Dr. David Kelly. Yeah. Dr. David Kelly was convinced that he, that he had yeah. WMDs. But not you know? to the same level. Yeah. But not Listen, the same I know you're in anyway. it. I just want to say my thank you. Through that divorce, you were absolutely supportive Aww. and friendly. We haven't and spoken about the divorce yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, always, and always there for me. And you used to text me. You told Aww. me I should never have married in the first place. But th <laughs> thank, <laughs> thanks for your support, guys. Well, thank you. You're, you're good and true friends, but that's me and personally. Thanks a lot for coming tonight. We'll have, have a good drink after, the, after this. Now, one of our favourite guests is the fabulous Alan Cumming. He really always makes his laugh, and he sent us this message from New York. I've been going on Rich and Judy since the prehistoric age. They always ask if we're going to do another series of The High Life, and I always say, you know, that was 13 years ago, get over it. And, but Rachel went down on his hands and knees. Oh, please. Oh, please. please. This is a magic please. moment please. on British television. <laughs> no? Okay. I, was about to say. I feel like I'm on drugs again. So what's happening? <laughs> and Judy spanked him. And I, um, they sent me a, a photo, a freeze frame of that moment. Oh. Do the highlight, do the highlight, oh, dear. How dare you? It's, a, it's, a, it's an angle of Richard I never thought I'd see. Every time, you know, when you come to do a press tour, especially now that I live in America, when I go back to Britain, you kind of do the rounds. And it was always, whenever I looked at the schedule and I saw that was going on Richard and Judy's show, it was always like, oh, that'll be fun. It's, my, it's been my favourite talk show and, you know, and every, Every time I go back to promote something, I, I even ask if I can go on. That's how much I like them. Well, the thing about Alan is he's just so frank and open, isn't he? I mean, he doesn't come on and, and, and be guarded or you oh, know, no, no, play, no. play games. He's just, he's, he just talks like, like he's in the kitchen, but you know? he's also incredibly funny. Oh, he's very dry. He's really right. funny. Wish they... How, hands up who... Do you remember the, do you remember the High Life guys? Oh, such a... No, I'm not going to leave it, editor. Do editor says, just leave it, Richard. <laughs> it's Chinatown. Do you remember... No? Um, what? Do you remember him telling us about that, that, that film he was going to make with Steve Martin about two, two gay policemen who were decorators no. in their spare time? No. And they, I wish we didn't dream this. <laughs> and they drive around New York um, in pursuit of criminals and stopping off at various shops and saying, Oh, I like that sofa. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll, I'll accept that instead of a, a new series <laughs> of The Highlight. Anyway, listen, uh, we now have the next few minutes of the programme entirely in the hands of our production team, because they asked for a free hand to route around through all our old tapes and put together a little package that uh, they're calling Totally Richard and Judy. So, will there be champagne or sackings? <laughs> Too late for that, Richard. After Too late. <laughs> we, we can ban them from the after-show party after this. <laughs> He's on a different level now. <laughs> Oh, we wanted them in the studio, but because of um, some sheep. It's fascinating, actually. Another story about a dog. Well, look at Elvis Presley's on the belt. Hi. Hi, hello. I'm Judy Finnegan, and this is my husband, Richard Maidley. Hello. And we wanted to do that for years. <laughs> Welcome to our new show. We're live at five. It's a beautiful. Just, 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 just oh. one. No, it's not. Oh, shut up! You've done nothing but talk all the way through. <laughs> and then cold, fa cold feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it's not just me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> cold feet star. John Thompson joins us live. When we fancy somebody, our eyebrows rise and fall. But it I all happens. Just, just, <laughs> but this all happens. If you did that, I'd run a mile. Can I go and get? The, can I get the hopper, guys? Can I bring it over? Um, oh, look at these shoes. I forgot I was wearing these. <laughs> and what was the point? You just fell. Fine. You both. Come on, take this. <laughs> if you know an even weirder way of getting around, contact us here. Ugh. What's <laughs> that? It's a uh, de coq, which are um, cockerel's testicles. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm not tasting <laughs> it. Oh, I can't. No, I'm not having a cock's testicle in my mouth. No, no. well... Tonight, Matthew, I am going to be Britney Spears. Britney Spears! Judy riding a donkey. <laughs> Good old fashioned crazy. Let's go to 100. Just got your finger in 
I think Judy's very good as you. <laughs> I really do. I'm, I'm rubbish, but she's very good as you. Lovely Christmas trees, Judy. Which one would you like? Well, that one. Oh, that's a very big one. That's about nine feet. That won't fit in your flat. Instead of exercising to lose weight, says a survey, what you should be doing is having as much sex as possible. The other night, I, I marched into the bathroom. Well, there's another 30 calories gone. <laughs> Anyway. Which, for five seconds, isn't bad going, no, is it? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> what do you think, guys? <laughs> what about? Well... <laughs> you sit there, Ooh, and I'll take this to the shop and pay for it. Don't want it. <laughs> well... <laughs> that was brilliant. Well, Thank I you. don't want them to show that. <laughs> and Dick and Dom, Dick on the left, Dom on the right, are here now. So oh. basically, Judy, you're sitting between two dicks. Not the first time. Give a cheeky smile on her face. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Come on, stop again. Stop again. Stop again. Stop again. That's what this is really all about. Jeez. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. It's quite cheap. That was, that was a guitar. We'd be, we'd be up the pole, but this is fine. Here we go. Oh, Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a television show. It's like being around their house. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you a favour. I would like to audition for you. Say you need me with you here, beside you. Anywhere you go, let me go to Judy, that's all I ask of you. Richard and Judy, the Richard and Judy show. They're married, you know. <laughs> Can I ask Cool Breeze? Oh, the no. <laughs> sure, Dick. <laughs> Are we lucky? Oh, no, look, he's had mics gone now. Nobody I feel breathed. so embarrassed. But if I said give us a cuddle and you said for how long, I'd hit you. Ma femme? Buffet. How are you feeling? I want to go home. <laughs> What was that last thing? What was that crying. last thing? I don't Where know what we? it was, but it's going to make me cry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was Girls Aloud, girls apparently. <laughs> it was a Girls Aloud thing. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. <laughs> I should say, we've got some more old friends of the show with us now. More journos, Julia Hartley Brewer, Sue Carroll and Kevin O'Sullivan. I'm surprised you, you, you've stayed on the sofa after seeing that lot. <laughs> I'm surprised, <laughs> surprised she's still married to you. <laughs> Do you know the most shocking thing about that is yeah, that yeah. She, normally you'd think seven years, you'd think, well, I bet Judy's gone through a lot of hairstyles. You've gone through more than her. <laughs> no, and you had a radical chop. I had a chop. radical chop, yeah. as they say. <laughs> a radical chopper. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, uh, and then it was so short, I didn't recognise you hardly. Yeah, it was, um, about, it was at the end of our first year, and we had a hairdresser who's, who's really good, who's gone now, who said, you, uh, you, oh, Richard, come into the 21st century. You've got to have your hair cut. I said, OK, and she cut it really short. We went to a pub the next day. It was a Saturday, wasn't it? Yeah. And I went and got the drinks. No, you went and got the drinks, and <laughs> I was sitting out there, and you came out, and, you, and I was right there and said, hello, I'm here, and you walked right past me, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't even recognise you. I remember writing two pages in the mirror all about it. <laughs> that's his haircut. Yes, that's true. Sold the paper like hotcakes. I remember. Yeah. Listen, you've been, you've been so useful to us, you, you, you three. Be useful. Oh, useful. That's oh, horrible. Nobody's ever said that to me. That's horrible. Oh, what? Oh, you've useful. Been so useful? Oh, hold on. I, let me finish. You see, they say I interrupt her. Exactly. Right? I think uh, it's she, she is very skilled at interrupting me to make me look like a... Uh, <laughs> But still tea time. Still tea time, so I didn't say it. Um, I was you've been so useful to us because we could call you up at any point of the day or night when a story was breaking and get you in, and, and you always had an opinion. And it's really hard to, to, to find a stable of people who can do that, and you're always willing to come in. I mean, d did we ever sort of throw you in any way? But, but, every but, time, every yeah. time, every time. <laughs> because, of course, we're sort of paid to have opinions, so, so we yeah. always have a strong opinion. You come on, every single time, the conversation at some point would sort of meander off yes. and you think, hang on, what were we talking oh, about? Yeah. But it would always be very interesting. <laughs> there was, you got from you the Well, there was the time when I think you two were just as confused as uh, the viewers. Suddenly, Yuri Geller stood up in the middle. He'd realised that in the mirror I'd be writing this daily column about what a awful person he was in <laughs> I'm a Celebrity. And he suddenly realised it, it was you. He got up and strangled <laughs> me. He said, I'm going to bring you. We found you. It. We got it. Oh, okay. He really did. And this guy... He tore into me when I was on Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, and I promised that I'm going to bend you. <laughs> <laughs> so here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of
<laughs> it was a bit of TV. A bit of there TV. was a collection for him to what? do that, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you, what were you about to say, Sue? Oh well, I remember once you um you I can't even remember what the subject was about, but it's just that's, that's just it's about just where you get people to confess the most outlandish things, things I wouldn't have told anyone. For instance, when an editor I was working for at the Mirror, who, who was Piers Morgan, oh, yeah, um, Piers, yeah, yeah. persuaded me because I'd been a little bit rude about Liz Hurley that I should try and look like her. Yeah, I mean, really great <laughs> idea. And I ended up like looking like this woman with a dead mouse on her head in the pictures. And I was so depressed about it the next day that I thought I'd treat myself. Now, most people, when they treat themselves, go out and buy a new handbag or a pair of shoes. Yeah, yeah. And you'd got wind of this. And he said, so what did you treat yourself to, Sue? And I said, well, it was a Mercedes. <laughs> That's right, and nobody that. knew about that. My mother <laughs> rang me and said, I didn't know that. You extravagant hussy. That's flash. Well, you are our Marnie suit as well. That made you feel better, yeah. There is, yeah. I need to get a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got a baby. You got a baby I out of us. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, that could sound so wrong <laughs> on air. Um, <laughs> yeah, now that's the funny thing. My, I sort of feel like, I haven't been on all the seven years, but I've gone through from singleton to meeting my husband and having a baby and getting yeah. married. Wrong yeah. order. I realise, don't tell my mother. Yeah, no, but yeah, and, and she was brought on. At 12 weeks, I came on and I said, I haven't oh. got any chance. Childcare. I'm on maternity leave, and you just said, "Well, bring oh, her on, bring, bring her on." on. Well, 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 I'll tell you what. I thought the grandparents were excited. How Twenty-one months. Twenty-one months. And very opinionated, oh. just like a mother. Don't know. Where <laughs> she'll, get to. she'll be sitting up. She'll be sitting on someone's sofa. Well, listen. We really <laughs> want to say years. a big thank you to all three of you. Yeah, You've thank been fantastic. You. Well, we want to say thank uh, you all well. the time. Whenever you came in, we knew we'd get good value out of you. And you have. We're heartbroken. Well, then we'll come on the come on the new one, which we can't really talk about here. But you know, we'll be. Why were you on that space hopper? Uh, oh, it God knows. Something to do with the 70s. Something to do with the 70s. I, I have no uh, idea. Oh, I know. We, uh, it was, uh, I wanted to buy a new Mercedes, and so they punished me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I we are taking that. one <laughs> final break, and coming up, the full Monty from our fat boy Slim. Hi, welcome Hello, back, and uh, just before we go on to our thrilling finale, as our fat boy Slim perform the full Monty live, a few last-minute questions from you, beginning with this one. Hi, I'm Jacob from Wigan. Why are you call Richard and Judy, not Judy and Richard? Because it's not fur for Judy. <laughs> couldn't couldn't Thank agree more. Thank you, Jacob. That is such a nice thing to say. Well, I really appreciate well, it. Tell me the Would answer, you like then. to ex you explain? I have no idea. Uh, it, when we were doing this morning, it used to irritate the heck out of ITV that, that this morning became known as Richard and Judy. Um, we don't know why. I didn't call it that. You didn't call it that. It was, maybe it's the, you, you've often said it's the, it's the, it's the, the cadence. It's like Judy and Richard or Richard and Judy. Richard and Judy just sounds better. Just don't know why. OK, okay. got another one now. Here we go. From London. Hi, Rich and Judy. Georgie from London. If you weren't legendary TV hosts, what would you be doing instead? Jude? Well, I, I always wanted to be a doctor, except I'm absolutely useless at maths and sciences, so that <laughs> so you, kind of... <laughs> you'd kill uh, people, wouldn't you? Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, probably a writer, because I just, just finished my first book, which comes out in October. Um, <laughs> and I read... And I re <laughs> Well, I can mention you it. Plugger. It's called Fathers and Sons. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I really... It took me 18 months. I loved it, and I can Quick. imagine doing that. OK, one last one. Blue from Richmond. Richard and Judy, did you make love on first date? <laughs> you cheeky so -so. Nice one. No, we didn't actually. You were a perfect gentleman. Was I? Yeah. Did we get to first base? Uh, no. <laughs> Second? I don't remember. So, I think third. Third. Shut up. Whatever. Okay. Okay, we've got. To, that's. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving swiftly towards the end now. You'll probably be glad to hear another message now from a star. One of our favourite uh, ever shows is back on the box soon. Strictly Come Dancing. So it's a real treat to get this video message from the host with the most, Brucey. The first time I met uh, Richard and Judy, I'll never forget it. It was in the job centre. Yes, they were. Uh, they were out of work. I was waiting for another comeback. Or oh, I do hate comebacks and uh, we really were up against it but uh, we went for a cup of coffee talked about it we could only afford one cup of coffee and uh, things were bad but then they went on from strength to strength and i haven't done too badly either tell them about the lambada competition that we won oh yeah we won a lambada yeah. Yeah. we won a lambada next competition yeah we did uh, uh, on holiday, uh, on holiday. Uh, now did you keep your dress on that time <laughs> Because I don't forget a thing, you know. I, <laughs> I, know, you, I, know I looked at you in a different light. <laughs> I really do. Oh, God. Well, there's one thing that does annoy me when they're working, I must say, is when Judy interrupts Richard. And she doesn't stop, you know. And you know, women, sometimes they are like that. I mean, my wife, when she's in Spanish, blah, 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 interrupts me all the time. But, oh, dear. Poor Richard, I feel for him. I really do. Judy sometimes doesn't stop. 
At last, a bit of sympathy. <laughs> At last, the record is set straight. OK, now, are you all excited? <laughs> <laughs> because we're going off the air. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Five men, five shrinking stomachs. Between them, Ian Marber's fat boy Slim have lost an incredible nine stone, seven pounds in just ten weeks. So, so time, then, to see what's left. Time, in fact, to see everything that's left. <laughs> Lock up your daughters, send your grannies into the garden and hang on to your knickers because the boys <laughs> won't be hanging on to theirs. We give you the fat boy Slim doing the full Monte! <laughs> You can leave your hat on You can leave your hat on You can leave your hat on You give me reason to live You give me reason to live You give me reason to live You're amazing. You're that amazing. was fantastic. Okay, right. can, I, can you, you shout the, the length of time left on the show? Okay, that's it then. You're all absolutely Ready? fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, that is it for this week, this series, and seven wonderful years. We've had a brilliant time. I do hope you've enjoyed it too, and thank you so much for watching. Absolutely. You have been a part of this from the start with your encouragement, your sound advice, and your occasional and necessary <laughs> forbearance. We cannot thank you enough, or indeed for Channel 4, for giving us such a very happy home here. We're going to see you at uh, another time, in another place, just a few weeks from now, but uh, that's it. We're finished. It's Until gone. Now. It's over. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the